In this video, we're going to look at fading reliefs. And it's quite a useful tool because you don't have relief layers and you need to make sure that reliefs match up to each other nicely. Okay, so here you can see that I've got this relief and I want to fade it. Okay, so let's just see what the tool does to start with. So the Fade Relief tool is located directly on the top toolbar here. If I select that, you'll notice that I get straight away two white dots on the screen. Now these are control points where I can fade from and to. So if I want to move these, just grab one of them. You can see that I've got a different cursor so left click, hold it down, move it to, let's say there, that's where I want it to start fading from. And then let's move that to there. Okay, now if I rotate around, you can see that this is 100% of the relief and it's going down to zero. If I move that in, you can see it starts fading down closer, okay? So this is how you can edit some of your reliefs and it's quite useful because if you want something sitting over the top of this, what you can do is fade it down and then you've got enough height to put something on top of this, okay? So if you move it around, let's say to there, you can also reverse the fade direction. So if I reverse that, you can see it goes the opposite direction, okay? Now the fade strength, if I bring that down, you can see that it brings some of this back and it doesn't go directly down to zero, okay? So if I bring that down to there, say 18%, it's only fading down just slightly. So if I rotate around so we can see it a bit more, and then let's bring the fade strength back up, and you can see it starts to come right the way down. So at 100% at this point, it is at zero, so it's coming down to nothing. Okay, now you can also do different types of fades. So the linear, which is what we're doing now, which is one point to another point, you can enter sizes for these as well. So if you want these to be perfectly accurate, you can enter some sizes for them. You can also do a radial. So what will happen here is that you have the center point let's say there, and it slowly fans out. And when it gets to the edge, then it will create a fade. If I reverse the direction, you can see that it's fading into the center. And you can also do it between boundaries. So if you've got, say, two vectors going round, you can blend between those two boundaries. So if I were to, let's say, cancel this and create a couple of boundaries, so if I take a plan view, and let's say I'll just draw two circles so you can see it. Okay, so let's say that those are my boundaries. So if I select the inside one and then the outside one, select between boundaries, rotate around, now there is a specific way that you have to select this. So if I reverse it, and I think you need to select the outside and then select the inside, okay? So if you do it the inside and then the outside, it won't work properly. So you can see just on this hoof down here and also down here on the tail that it is coming down. So if I were to change the strength, you can see them come back up. Okay, and it's just working between those two boundaries. Okay, so I always forget the order as you've just seen in which to select them. So make sure that you select the outside first and then the inside. If you do it the opposite way around, it won't work. Okay, so let's cancel that and let's delete those vectors because I don't need them. So let's take a look at this in sort of a more real world sorts of scenario. So let's say that I want to put maybe a scroll or something at the bottom of this Pegasus. 
So let's go to just create some clip art. You could create your own scroll from scratch, but I'm just going to bring in a scroll. Okay. Now you can see that let's say I didn't want to change the size of this. Let's say I just wanted it to be, let's say that big. Okay. Now you can see that if I were to paste this down, let's press enter and paste it down. You can see that the Pegasus is coming through the scroll and I don't really want that. And what I would rather do is have the scroll over the top of this. So let's undo that. Let's keep it as floating clip art and I'll just leave it there. I'm not too fussed about that. What I'm going to do is go into the fade relief. So if we're going to fade relief with that on there, let's maybe take a plan view so I can see this. And I want to fade from, let's say there, down to there. Okay, now you can see that it's sitting over the top of it. Now it's losing a little bit of the hoof down here. So what I'm going to do is change the strength. Now I can't do it too much because you can see that the tail here is actually coming through the scroll. So I need to bring that up a touch and say to about there. But it gives you the general idea. So if I apply that and then cancel it, you can see that the scroll is sitting over the top of it. So now I can paste that scroll down and it's sitting over the top of the Pegasus. So that's where the fade relief really comes in handy. And I think that you'll find that quite useful when using Maker Plus, because as I said, you haven't got relief layers and you need to make sure that everything fits over the top of each other quite nicely.